What is going on ladies and gentlemen? I'm just going to start the video strong. The Necromancer is by far the worst PvP class in the Elder Scrolls Online. It has been for a very, very long time. Now, if you guys do not know me or are familiar with my content, hi, I'm Horcrux. I've played ESO uh, since beta. I have well over 15,000 hours exclusively in PvP and over 2,000 hours on the Necromancer alone between console and PC. So I know what I'm talking about. There are so many concepts intrinsically wrong with a class in PvP. I'm not going to be able to list literally everything in this video. Otherwise, it would be an hour long video. I would have so many talking points. I wouldn't even know where to stop and where to begin. It'd just be a rounding video, kind of like this intro is. But I want to hit on the high points of where I think the Necromancer severely lacks and my suggestions on how to fix them. And by all means, if I forget anything or leave anything out that you deem important in this video that the Necromancer is missing or I, I just simply didn't cover, let me know down in the comments. I'm going to ask you guys to please smash the like button on this video because this is the only way. Share the video content down below. Watch it until the end. The reason I want you guys to do this on this video in particular is because I want to make Necromancer great again. The development team does not listen to the PvP people on the forums. We as a pvp player we get zero love from the devs so the only way to really reach out to them is just to have everyone cry over the class it seems that it seems like that works like the more people who bitch and moan about something it, it typically gets taken care of so guys what i want you to do i want you to bitch and moan down in the comments of why this class is terrible i want you to share this video with many platforms as you can as many content creators as you can get people to react to it bring this to the devs attention so they can actually hear us out and we can make changes make necromancer great again so with that very long intro out of the way let's go over why the necromancer is the worst class in pvp Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So first off, the kit is missing so many buffs and so many debuffs. You have to compensate for them on your bar or in your potion setup, which really limits the way you can build the Necromancer. There's not really many ways you can build it out anyway. I think all builds are equally bad, so you can argue that, you know, you can run it all kinds of different ways, but it's still going to suck, right? So first of all, it's missing major sorcery or major brutality, so you're forced to run degeneration or you're forced to run um, potions to compensate for this. You know, not the end of the world. You know, some classes have you know, a little lackluster. Okay, it gets worse. Well, you don't have crit chance of the front bar, so what you're forced to do, again, if you're, if you're not going to run potions, I highly suggest on this class that you run the Alliance Battle Drought or the Spell Drought potions because they're going to give you your crit chance as well as your source of Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, which is going to free up two slots on your bar. Otherwise, you're, gonna slot, you're stuck with going with Camouflage Hunter and Degeneration on your front bar, okay? This class does not have access to Major Breach, so guess what? You're either stuck with running uh, Elemental Susceptibility to get Breach. The reason I'm naming these buffs off, no, they are not necessary to have, but they are the easiest buffs to get that is going to help bolster your damage as much as possible or you can go to the sword and board skill line and you can run you know power bash you know and get the uh yeah the, the major minor uh breach there right and don't worry it gets worse and even if you do that you still don't have any mobility on the class so you're either going to have to run quick cloak on your bar which is going to give you a uh, major evasion and major expedition well which is pretty nice uh, quick cloak is actually pretty slipped on you're either stuck going with Race Against Time, which is going to give you Major Expedition, right? It's going to remove you all your stamina abilities for four seconds, which is pretty expensive. It's 4K on the on, on the kit. This is, this is not something you want to be spamming, right? And, and, unless you can help it. Or you can go to the Vampire skill line, and we're going to talk about the Vampire skill line in a little bit. Or you can run Mist Form, and you do a Lucid Mist, or the uh, the, 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 the Far Cloud Mist, or whatever. So, in total, you need Major Breach, you need a Major a Sorcery, Major Brutality, you need some sort of crit right and you need mobility so that is four slots of your 10 slot bar that you just have to have if, if you're a solo player this is coming from a solo perspective right now if you're in a group play yeah you can run some group buffs or you're arguing yeah whatever this this does not apply to you okay this applies to a small group and solo player perspective right so you you're stuck having to figure out how you're going to get these abilities that, that has four skills effectively on your bar that you have to compensate for on top of that and getting those buffs and debuffs is not enough it feels like the entire time you are playing necromancer you are playing a buff simulator I, i'm not joking guys like let, let's just take a look all right 
So let, let's start from the very beginning. You need your major sorcery. You need to get your ghosty boy out. That's going to heal you. It's going to take a 10% less damage. You need to have your minor protection and minor endurance buff from turn evil. This is a really good fear of CC. By the way, you have to have your elemental drain up on someone. You always have to have your summoning armor. It's only last 20 seconds. You also have to have mortar pool. And you also have to be casting vigor to get the five second heal and the minor uh, resolve the entire time. So look how long it takes just to get all of your buffs up. So. Uh, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000. Like, 8 seconds worth of buffing and debuffing. And that's not even including trying to do damage, trying to CC your opponent, trying to run around, trying to heal. Oh, look, more cool is really all coming, coming off cool. Oh, I gotta go back to my front bar. I have to cast this fucking spooky boy, right? Oh, look, Entropy is off cool. Now I gotta cast Entropy. And by that time, like, I'm back in my back bar. I have to recast Summoning Armor. I have to recast Immortal Quill. I have to recast Ellie Drain. And it, the shit's going to get purge and it's just so annoying to deal with man you spend all of your time and all of your resources buffing and debuffing you can't get anything done you cannot get anything done and let's just kind of go through some of the skills that they just, just drive me crazy resistant flesh on paper looks like a tremendous skill this costs 4500 to cast all right so it better be good yes it gives you an amazing heal ability you know uh 12k you know without having anything buffed it's, it's probably like 13k or something like, yeah almost 14k worth worth of healing right but the thing is it inflicts you with a minor defile, reducing your healing. And you may say, Horcrux, well, you have a passive that uh, compensates for this. When you have a negative effect on you, it increases your healing done. What a useless passive this is. You have a passive to counteract a negative effect of your, your burst cell, your kit ability. This passive needs to be changed to something else. You, you, you need to take minor defile off resistant flesh this is the dumbest thing i've ever heard of in my entire life now the second paragraph when you we, we, when you cast this you get spell and physical resistance you know equal to half the amount healed for three seconds which is awesome but the thing is guys the thing is let's say you're at like 10k health you cast this you get like a 10k burst seal whatever so that means you get 5k extra resistances what happens when you tap it again to get to full it overrides those previous resistances and instead of you know the 15k or, or sorry i'm just spitting out numbers so instead of the 10k right the 10k heal is giving you 5k resistances now you're going to tap it again it's only heal you know 5 6k maybe and now you're only getting 3k resistances which overrides and mind you this is going to cost you 9000 magic 9000 and in addition to that there's no guarantee the hill's gonna go to you it can go to this ogrim it can go to this fucking horse it can go to the mud crab like when i'm like around deserters someone has like a 40k health like arc and i don't want my hill going to them zoss where is the option in combat that says i only want to heal members give me a little toggle bar i only want to heal members in my group if i am the only sorry son of a bitch in my group i only want to heal myself i am a selfish son of a bitch i don't want to heal anyone else give me a, a toggle option for that to happen okay now let's i could go off on this necromancer while i'm trying to keep this bullet points is it's missing a lot of major buffs and it, it just feels like a buff stimulator right, on top of that your, your main source of damage is this blast bones this is the most clunkiest skill i've ever seen in my entire life first of all it has a health bar it can get cc it usually gets destroyed and it has a mind of its own there is no guarantee when this mofo is going to land on your opponent maybe it even goes to the right person i i i don't know blast bones by itself is is pretty cool blast bones you know it doesn't cost a lot when you have a skeletal armor up it, it's actually a really cool ability um i would suggest putting major breach on blast bones okay uh, both more just make it part of the, the the base morph whatsoever okay i feel like there needs to be some mobility maybe like a like a like, like a major like a minor expedition from some of the abilities that you cast i mean it needs a lot maybe one of the grave lord abilities like maybe flame skull or something on this bar needs to give you crit chance you know something you know uh, along those lines so blast bones by itself you should not be able to talk talk and toggle oh god you know english hard to target pets there should also be a combat option to where i don't want to accidentally hit someone's matriarch i don't want to accidentally hit someone's scam tab targeting on controller is impossible 
Like, even though I tab target this Ogrim, like, if I'm just a slight bit off, all of my attacks are going to completely miss and go whoever is off to the side. When I tab target someone, I only want to hit them. It doesn't work on controller for whatever reason. Like, like PC, like, I see people doing all the time. It's like, you see abilities literally phasing through people to hit people behind them. I can't do that on controller. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't know if it's a skill issue. I don't know what's up. That, that pisses me off. All right. So I think there should be also be another option somewhere in the option to where if I do not want to target pets, I can just target players only. There should be right here in combat, target players only, toggle on. Uh, that, that would fix everything, right? You know, all the pet builds who sit in the engine guardian, the scamps, the, you, you, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? All right, so skill wise, uh, most like... Uh, the Skeletal Mage, absolute dog shit. Um, Shocking Siphon, absolute dog shit. No one's going to stand in this. Boneyard, absolute dog shit after they, they, they nerf Harmony. Flame Skull, this Flame Skull actually has a really cool concept. It's not that cheap. Uh, it does hit pretty hard. But the thing is, if I'm at max cast range with this, right? If I cast two of these in a row, you know, with the, uh, the, the, the Ricochet Skull, for example, you can dodge these so easily so easily say if a max range for example like i can cast two of these and by the time that the second one hits you you can dodge roll both of them so but, but, but by the time it gets to your opponent you're out six thousand magicka for nothing might i suggest you make ricochet skull like make it undodgeable like the scaven the the cliff racer used to be for the warden how it used to hit people through roll dodge make that like Ricochet Skull or Venomous Skull, make it to where like it hits people through Roll Dodge. Give it some viability because right now it sucks. And let me also talk about Blast Bones. This does flame damage, but this doesn't proc any of your sets. Like this doesn't proc Burning Spell Weave, even though this is clearly states it does flame damage. It actually doesn't proc Burning Spell Weave, which is which is another caveat, right? So, oh, anyway. So let's let's move down the kit, right? So pretty much everything in Brave Lord besides is stocking Blast Bones. I, I will say. Pestilent Colossus is pretty cool. Uh, Pestilent, this this is the only savior for the class, is this ultimate. I mean, quite frankly, it doesn't do that much. I mean, it, it does, but people usually get hit by two ticks and they can't roll out of it. Um, this is the the one bread and butter for the class. But again, you, you to, to also add to the list of things wrong with the class, you do not have a reliable CC. You don't have any stuns. The only stuns that you have is a delayed fear from Bone Totem. And it, it costs so much to, to, to cast. I, I, I know the morphs bring it down a little bit, you know, with, with cost, but it, it doesn't do anything. There, there, there's no reliable time CC that you can possibly land with this. And so you're stuck with running um, what I had here just a second ago in the Fighters Go skill. I actually used Turn Evil. Um, I highly suggest you try Turn Evil on your Necromancer. If you're struggling, which everyone is struggling, it's going to give you minor endurance, it's going to give you minor protection, and it's going to stun you, uh, your opponent. It doesn't cost that much stamina. It actually kind of does, but. Um, it, it is a pretty good uh, just go to have in the bar. But anyway, so you have to run this to compensate for the lack of CC. So in total, you have like five slots you got to take care of just, just from the lack of, you know, kit skills. All right. So let's <laughs> let's finish going down the line of the kit of why it's bad. Uh, Death Scythe, I cannot get this to land. A Ruin the Scythe is really good. This is a pretty decent spammable. But again, Conal effects in the Elder Scrolls Online are just dog shit. Like, have you guys ever tried to land the Kamehameha being from the Arcanist class? This is what it kind of feels like. I miss Dawnbreakers all the time. I miss the size all the time. I don't know if it's a registry issue. I do not know if it's like a location issue with the servers. This is a clunky ability. And speaking of clunky abilities, Resistant Flesh and Blast Bones, for whatever reason, feel so bad in open world. I feel that these two abilities had their own cast time without actually having a cast time i cannot tell you how many times i'm in the open world and i cast blast bones like like right now i casting it's working just fine in open world i try to do the exact same movement here it will not cast the blast bone so i'm essentially wasting global cooldown and same thing for resistant flesh i find that i i, I cancel like the animation of this somehow i i don't actually get the heal from it i know in this demonstration it's not really showing that but in open world i can sit and spam like i know there's late there's a latency but the rest of the skills work just fine and the other classes work just fine but i tend to run into issues with blast bones and resistant flesh it just constantly it seems like it's not firing i i feel like there's some sort of bug sometimes it'll tell me blast bones is ready and it's actually not ready okay and there's also a synergy bug with the boneyard i think if you sprint into this uh they, they actually messes up the synergy there, there's some other bugs with that it, even if you do try to use this for open world content this entire skill line needs reworked and there's need, needs to be a plentiful buffs on the clan anyway let's move on biting harvest actually pretty decent um, if you can find a slot for it, 
I don't know where you slot this. I do not know where you had the space to slot this unless you run the Alliance Spell Drought or Alliance Battle Drought Potions. There's just simply nowhere to run this. Or you run Chudens or something to, 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 to give you your, 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 your armor buffs. But you can't not use Summoner's Armor because you need this to reduce the cost of all your spells, which is, is astronomical. Okay? It costs 4500 just to cast this piece of shit spell. So I... I I think Necromancer across the board needs like a 15% cost reduction on all mag abilities. Stamina abilities, yeah, kind of leave them alone, but the mag abilities need like a 15% just, just, just chopping block, all right? Body Harvest is actually pretty good. Um, it, it does generate a lot of ultimate. This, 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 is, this is actually really good. Um, Grave Grasp, so this is supposed to buff um, all of your pets and all your, 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 your archers and all that. Uh, this is too hard to use in open world. This is way too hard. So not only do you have to keep your enemy's position in check you have to know where your pets are and then you have to line yourself in such a way to where you can like collateral your pets as well as the people who are zerging you down it, it just doesn't work for the class you don't have time for this you, you just simply don't have time for this man and there's a cast time oh, wait okay it's the instant cast time duration one second okay i thought there's a cast time on this as well but that so the the concept is great and you're supposed to be like a pet boy but you, you don't really use the pet boys besides blast bones and is it it's just it's, it's it's just bad, man. Living death expunge is actually kind of cool, but the thing is, you have so many negative effects on you anyway. Purging two or three of these, uh, or even five. I, th I think five. Once you get the hexapod morph, um, it purges five negative effects. That's nothing. You're gonna have like twenty negative effects on you like, all the time. Like this is completely a waste. And cost health as well, right? Uh, life and death. I actually don't use this, um, so I can't really speak on this behalf. Uh, yeah, Spear Garden's 2500 That's okay, but I, I actually think it should be costing more than that. I thought it was like 4500 I may actually cut this out or keep it in. I don't know. Anyway, Spear Guardian is, uh, you actually have to have it, or you have the, the Rapid Mender. Uh, one of the two, you gotta have that on there. And then Mortal Quill, again, like, every buff on this class, it doesn't last as long as it needs to. This is only 12 seconds. Your Summoner's Armor is only 20 seconds. Your Spear Guardian is only 16 seconds. Like... Uh, and you have to pretty much use Blast Bones like it's, it, like it's its own buff. This is pretty much like a, a five second buff you have to keep up at all times. If you don't keep your Blast Bones up, you don't have any pressure on the class and you're, unless you run the Master Arena weapon, you know, Marshall, you know, Monster Cheese stuff that everyone runs on every class ever because there's no build variability in this game because of hybridization. The hybridization is completely backfired and there is no hybridization in the game. There is five PvP sets. If you're not picking one of the or two of the five, you're gimping yourself. It sucks. I, I can't tell you how many comments I read. It's like, look, Rex, you read the same thing on every class while I'm a solo player, and these are the best sets in the game statistically to run. So, of course, I'm going to run them. I'm not going to get myself. There is no honor left in PvP, is my understanding. That's it just, it is what it is. A dog eat dog world out there, man. Like, I, I've been even like mowing down the level 30s, like the, the level 15s in open world. I've been mowing down off their mounts. You know what I mean? Like, it is absolute savages out there now. But. Yeah, guys, this is actually turning into more of a rant than uh, me constructively going through and structurally telling you what is pros and what is cons. So let me go ahead and recap all the cons for you guys. Um, it doesn't have crit. It doesn't have reliable CC. It doesn't have major or minor breach. Uh, the spells cost way too much. The class does not have any mobility. That is the biggest downsides to the class, which are pretty big downsides. All right. Um, again, the abilities cost way too much. It is like playing buff debuff simulator. You need, because also, if you guys listen to this, please buff the duration more to 20 seconds. Make this a 30 second buff. You'll make Spirit Guardian 25 seconds. Of course, tweak some of the numbers. Like, it, it is just ridiculous. I have to go through all this, right? Make Blast Bones on Target one doesn't have health. Like, there's so much counterplay to this, and it, it, and it just runs off to random people sometimes. Someone stealths up. So, if someone stealths up, right? It doesn't go to the, the, the nearest person, all right? It just kind of sits there. It just sits there and doesn't do anything. It just looks around. So you're stuck with the Blast Bones grayed out for the next seven seconds. So you can't even cast another Blast Bones to override your last Blast Bones. It's, it's just really annoying. Yeah, so those are the cons. Uh, the buffs to the class, I mean, the, the, the pros to the class, well, it does look cool. Um, but I feel that you have to run too much cheese and too many crutch sets in order to make this class viable solo and this is kind of like from a stamina perspective if you try to run this mag you know from a mag perspective you have to run like a master's destro for your cc and blast bones it it, it, it it's worse like 
I don't know how people run it. Kudos to you guys. Like I said, I have like a thousand hours on this class collectively between PC and console, and I struggle with this class. I will say it is good in dueling. You do have some pretty awesome uh, passives. Your, your rapid rot passive, um, they, they, they actually need to buff this, I think, at, uh, back to 20% what it originally used to be. When you are dueling, uh, this is actually a pretty top tier class. If you run sword and board, you know, with the uh, the, the piercing strikes and gives you a major minor breach. Uh, this is actually a very, very strong class. No, it's not going to put down like a warden or something like that. Or you're going to be running kind of even against a really geared DK. But uh, in, in duels, uh, it does hold its own weight in water. It is pretty decent. And that's mainly because, you know, Masters, Vaishran, you guys know the meta setups, right? I I'm tired of even repeating those words in my chat. I, I absolutely hate it. So that has been my ramble or well, my 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 thoughts on why the necromancer is is just so bad guys it needs a lot of love and hopefully hopefully you guys agree with me if you have any other suggestions on how to best improve the class or what you would do to make the class better let me know down in the comments with any stroke of luck the devs may happen upon this video and take what we say in this video of uh, it a little serious or maybe at least give it some thoughts when how they are going to reorg this class they are going to have to reorganize they don't have to restructure this class at some point anyway i can tell you guys right now i don't have the stats in front of me but this is probably the least played class in pvp in the other scrolls online by far and i mean the, the it's facts are facts man the, the the kids are missing way too much and it just has so much working against it that it, it's just for the average player it's just too hard to play uh, it, it is a very very difficult class i think if you could increase the duration on the buffs i think that would be the best starting points yeah you can compensate for the lack of buffs and debuffs that the class is missing but having a 12 second buff mortal coil is kind of essential in my opinion you can go in the comments and say well you don't have to run these abilities horcrux well to you i say if you're not running these abilities i have on the bar you're probably doing it wrong so yeah spirit guardian that has been my ramble. I want to stop there. Otherwise, I will go on for another half an hour on things that I do not see fit for the class. If you appreciate the drip, please leave a like and sub. Do not forget to share and like the vi video to get the devs' attention. Maybe since they don't respond to us on the forums. And there's no open line of communication between us and the devs. So we can't really voice our petty opinions to anyone besides my YouTube videos about it, right? <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching. And before I peace out, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my com community members. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. This has been Horcrux. I'm, I'm going to go to bed now. It's 3 a.m. Peace.